Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue. I'm the Black Powder Editor for Guns of the Old West Magazine. And today we're going to be taking a look at Sam Colt's favorite six gun, the third model Dragoon. This is a replica. It was manufactured by Army San Marcos in Italy. That company is no longer in business, but Uberti makes them and they're imported by most of the major cowboy gun importers. The Dragoon series grew directly out of Colt's experience with the Walker revolver. And as you can see, here's a walker, and we'll pop them next to the Dragoon. And the, uh, the walker is quite a bit bigger. And Colt learned some lessons from the walker that he applied to the Dragoon series. Uh, it was still a heavy 44 caliber gun. In fact, these things weren't called Dragoons at the time. Uh, Colt eventually called it his old style holster pistol. But as you can see the barrel is reduced to seven and a half inches instead of nine inches. And there are some improvements in the lock work and uh, in some of the other areas and we'll go through those in a minute. But basically Colt refined this design. Uh, the next one was the Whitneyville Dragoon which was still used some of the Walker parts and then he got into the actual Dragoon series as we would know it today and there were three models uh, the first second and third Dragoon this is a copy of the third Dragoon and this was an Army San Marcos replica the company is no longer in business uh, so you can't get this exact gun but you can get a birdie replicas of this this gun went through some transition phases before it got to the third model. And I'll just show you here on the walker. You can see that we have these oval cylinder stops for the bolt. Uh, rather than the rectangular stops with leads that we're used to today. There's a squared trigger guard. There's the dished frame for the rounded off grips. Uh, there are a lot of differences between the walkers and later Colt guns. And in the Dragoon series they went through an evolutionary process to get to this final version, the third Dragoon, uh, which basically has the modern uh, Colt lock work, uh, basically the final lock work up until the single action army. It's got the rectangular cylinder stops with leads. It has the rounded trigger guard design all the way through. It's got a squared off frame for the uh, for the grip assembly at 90 degrees. Um, it, it does have a few differences from later guns. It has an extremely weak cylinder latch. It's better than the uh, the T-spring that you would find on the walker. Let me try to get this down. See, I'm saying it's weak and I can't even open it, right? Um, but trust me, there we go. It's it's an awkward arrangement, but it's got a catch that's dovetailed into the barrel, like later guns, but it's a fairly shallow dovetail. And the spring-loaded catch is still fairly easily dislodged during the heavy recoil that these guns have. Now, it, this gun, the third model, came out in 1851. And it was under development at the same time as the 1849 pocket model and the 1851 Navy. The 1851 Navy actually came out in 1850. Uh, and the pocket model came out in 1850. Now these three guns together in 1850 and 51 basically gave Colt the entire spectrum of handgun um, operation. You had the 31 caliber hideout pocket gun. You had the 36 caliber belt gun. And you had the 44 caliber saddle holster gun for the military. So he pretty much had everything he wanted at that point covered. The Dragoon remained in production until 1861, and it was supplanted by the 1860 uh, Colt Navy. Uh, excuse me, the 1860 Colt Army. 
they only made 22,000 of all models of the Dragoon, so it was not very highly produced. The Army bought 9,300 of those, and the rest went to civilians. So actually, there were more than twice as many of these sold to civilians than there were to the military. Um, now, part of the reason for that is because it was after the Mexican War, and we were in a period of relative peace, where the Army was still using surplus guns that it had available. Uh, and the other reason for it is this was just a big heavy gun for civilians to carry. Uh, much more popular with civilians during the same period was the 1851 Navy in 36 caliber, which was light and much easier to handle. But a lot of plainsmen liked this big gun, and it was surprisingly popular for buffalo hunting up until the era of the uh, single-shot cartridge rifles, because before that, buffalo were hunted from horseback, uh, Indian fashion. Indians used bows and arrows, but a lot of plainsmen used a heavy single-shot pistol, and then they moved to these heavy revolvers because they would gallop up alongside the buffalo and they would shoot them. Uh, just like the Indians shot them with arrows, they would shoot them with single shot pistols and then they would shoot them with these because it, it packed quite a wallop and was able to put them down with a well-placed shot. The Dragoon will hold up to 50 grains of powder. But the typical load for this is 40 grains of powder in a round ball or 40 grains of powder in a conical. Now on this one you're going to see there's a little hacked up area right up top here. Uh, and that's because Army San Marcos sold these with a set of folding leaf sights like you'd find on a British double rifle or like express sights. And with that sight in place, even if all the leaves were down, you couldn't use a hammer nose rear sight. And I'm, I'm here to tell you those leaf sights made this gun shoot so high that it was a danger to passing aircraft, and, and that's why I took it off. Uh, it shoots high enough with the, uh, the standard sights. Now, I know I'm touching the trigger here, but as you can see, there are no caps. This is an empty gun. Um, this gun is very heavy, but it's quite well balanced. Uh, you could carry this in a holster. You can shoot this one-handed. You can shoot it two-handed. Um, it's, it's actually an excellent gun, though the much lighter weight 1860 Army uh, was happy, uh, was, was something that most planes were happy to replace this with. But some of the old-timers still continued to use this, and, and there are some tales that uh, while Bill Hickok used this on uh, his, some of his earlier uh, adventures, um, but there's, there's a lot of disagreement about that. But a lot of frontiersmen, a lot of the older plainsmen, uh, preferred these guns because of their power. And they were willing to put up with the weight, and usually they carried them in saddle holsters. So we're going to take you through the procedure for loading and firing these and take it to the range and see what it'll do. Well, the third model Dragoon is the, uh, the first 4440. It took 40 uh, grains of black powder and a 44 caliber ball as its load, and it was a very powerful, massive gun. Uh, before 1860, with the improvements in steel, a gun like this was the only way to contain the, uh, the heavy pressures of these 44 caliber loads. So let's load it up. I'll put it on half cock so we can spin the cylinder. And uh, then we're going to take a powder measure and get a 40 grain charge of 3FG black powder. And we'll pour that right in. Now, for the next step, because I take a lot of criticism for usually lubing over my chambers, but I'm going to use an Oxyoke lubed wad, followed by a 44 caliber ball. And then we'll drop the loading lever and ram it home. Give it a good little compression. Okay, so we're going to do that five times and then we'll leave one, one chamber open for safety. Okay, I'm using this uh, Ted Cash capper to, uh, to cap the Dragoon. This holds about 100 caps. Uh, if you want to get through a, a, say, a cowboy match with this, it's the best way to go. And there's plenty of room 
here in the uh, the back of the recoil shield to get a capper on. So that's it. That's the fifth one. I'm gonna wheel the cylinder around and we'll drop the hammer on an empty for safety and we're ready to shoot. See how it does. I hate when that happens. That always happens.